Hi, this is a video to show off the Microsplat Mesh Module. Uh, what I'm going to do is set this um, San Francisco style house up so that we can paint on it with Microsplat. Uh, this asset was available free off the store. Uh, I converted it to a metal workflow, which is uh, one thing I had to do. Um, right now, the Microsplat stuff doesn't support a specular workflow, uh, but it may in the future. We'll see. So, um, let's just set this guy up first, and then I'll talk about some of the uh, little um, things you might want to know. Uh, what you do is select uh, your mesh, and we're going to add a Microsplat mesh component. Uh, and then what you'll see here is that it has a blank template material. Um, and then it's got a little creation interface here which says mesh painting needs a shader and material. Assign one uh, or create one now. So if you already have uh, stuff set up, you can just assign the template material and then you'll be set. Um, but in most cases, what you want to do is create a new shader. There are three types of shaders. Uh, the first is called a splat map shader. And what this is, is you just get... Uh, up to 32 textures depend on your model. Uh, there's no like overall texturing or anything. The next is an overlay shader. Uh, if you do an overlay shader, it'll keep your existing material uh, in place and then it'll add a second drawing pass that draws a splat map. So the advantage of this is that if you have a custom shader for your model, uh, you can keep all that custom shading and then paint on top of it. The disadvantage is that uh, it's going to be slower because it's going to draw the object twice uh, instead of once. And then finally, there's a, a mode called a combined map. And what this is, is essentially what I have is my own version of the standard shader or something similar to it. Uh, so that you can plug in your albedo and normal maps and things like that uh, and have it draw that and then draw the splats over it. Um, but you don't have to do that in two passes. It's all done in one shader in one pass. And then uh, additionally, there's some, um, you get some interplay between those features. You can blend the normal maps uh, between the splat maps and the regular maps and things like that. So if you're doing uh, regular texturing and you can use the combined shader, that is the most efficient and best uh, option. And since we have some regular texturing on this, on this object and it's using the standard shader, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, use the combined mode. The second option here is Create Texture Array Config. If you're not familiar with Microsplat, uh, the way textures work and are assigned for painting is through a Texture Array Config. And I suggest you go read the uh, Microsplat docs uh, about that stuff. I'm not going to cover it here. Um, in our case, I'm going to use an existing uh, Texture Array that I have. So I'm going to turn this off. And then what I'm going to do is hit Create Required Data. When we do this, it's going to ask us where we want to put it. And I'm going to put it inside my San Francisco house folder here. And what it's going to do is create a Microsplat data directory here. And that's essentially where Microsplat stores all of its stuff um, that it generates. So you can see here that it has selected uh, the Microsplat material for us. And, uh, and we are set up in mesh mode. And we have our basic Microsplat material with this new section that contains things like what source UVs am I using, uh, what shader mode am I in, and then um, I can force it to be all the world-based effects to be in local space. Uh, and then you have a packing mode. And there's two packing modes here. Uh, separate, which is essentially what the Unity standard shader uses, and then a pack mode. Um, I'm going to just use a separate because uh, that's how my maps are prepared. Um, but if you're using the pack mode, then you're going to have a diffuse map, a normal map, and you're going to put your other PBR components all into one map that's decided, uh, described in the docs. And then I'm going to go ahead and enable a smoothness metal map and enable a height map and an inclusion map as well, uh, because we have all that data and then we can use it to texture our object. So once these are enabled, I'm going to go back to my house here and you'll see here that now I have the template material and I can select the material um, or I can create a texture array config. And so it basically says that I need to create a texture array and assign it to the material, which I forgot to do. Um, so if I select the material again, you can come down here and you can see it has uh, channels for your, your albedo height map and your normal smoothness AO array. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and select some ones that I already have. I need a normal one. I'll select this one. Uh, so that now I have textures, and you can see here, these are the textures um, that I have to choose from. So let's go to um, the model again. 
And actually, let me choose a different texture array config because that only has one texture in it, and that is not enough for us. Um, there we go. That should do it. That should have more than one texture. Oh, and did I choose the? I choose the diffuse. That's wrong. I want the normals. So here we go. This one has let's see, four textures in it. So in combined mode, you need a way to set the alpha, and so one of those textures we're going to use as our alpha channel. Um, so next, when we go back to the uh, model, we'll see that it says it needs control textures. So uh, these are splat maps, effect effectively, which control how much weight each uh, texture has. And Microsplat uh, will generate these for us automatically, and you'll see here that uh, right now it says it needs one uh, control texture. That's because we have four textures uh, in our array, and uh, and so we need uh, one channel of, of the texture for each uh, uh, texture. So it's going to store the weights in RGB and A, um, and so we need one control texture. Now you can override this and provide less or more, and I'll talk later about why you might do that. And then you can say what size it is, and for me, 256 by 256 is plenty. And so we're going to create the control textures, and it'll just create them in our Microsplat data directory. And you'll notice the interface here has changed and the visuals have changed. Right now, our splat map just sort of has some random data in it, so it's splattering the textures all over the place. Uh, you'll also notice that you have this uh, for the material. The material is called San Francisco House Yellow 2, um, and you'll have some data here. So first of all, we have the control texture that we just generated, and we have what's called a UV range. So uh, the, the UVs on uh, something that you're splat mapping don't have to be uh, in the zero to run range. What uh, what this uh, system will do is figure out the min and the max of all the UVs and uh, essentially stretch the splat map over that area. Now, if they're in the zero to one range, that's fine too. No big deal, but it's gonna try and use the texture as best as possible for the splat map data. And you can actually override this or update it if the mesh has changed. Uh, you might wanna override it. Um, that's a trick you can use to get multiple objects on the same splat maps. But we're going to go ahead and sign uh, these smoothness metal maps and other maps here. And so here's our smoothness metal map. I'm going to sign this. I'm going to sign the height override. And then uh, the final one is occlusion. So AO, there we go. And so uh, this overriding system lets you have uh, different textures for multiple instances. So each each version of the house could have different overrides and it would generate a new instance of the material for that house. Uh, it's also very smart. So if you you know have the same house with the same uh, data a bunch of times, then it's, it's not going to generate new materials. So they're gonna share the same material. Um, and so that's kind of what these overrides are about. Uh, so finally, let's go into the painter. And what we do is go to window mesh painter here. And I'm going to go ahead and dock it up here. And what it'll say here is that we need a mesh collider on this mesh uh, to uh, paint on it. And I'll probably add a button there so that you can just add it without having to do this. But for now, mesh collider. So now we have a mesh collider. Our painting interface will show up. And uh, basically what we have is we can paint textures, wetness, puddles, streams, lava. They're available in the module for that. And then displacement damp dampening which is useful for tessellation. I'll get into that in another video. And then you can choose from various brushes and you can basically drop new brushes in there if you need them, they're just grayscale images. Uh, you'll wanna check the texture settings, they have to be on clamp uh, if you're gonna do that. And then here are the four textures that we chose. So we're gonna fill with the first texture and that's gonna get our original uh, texturing back because if you go to the inspector uh, for our material here, we have to select the material in the Microsplat data directory, um, you'll see that down here, we say that the mesh alpha index is zero. So basically the zero, the first texture in the array is gonna be the same as nothing for us. We're not gonna use that texture to, to paint. What we're gonna do is use it for transparency. And so then, um, you know, we can uh, paint away any splat maps we do. And um, then, uh, the, we have some other options here, uh, which I'll get into at some point. Um, 
for instance, you can use like a sub part of the array. So if you have a, a texture you're using on tr terrain and it's got 16 textures, you can be like, you know what, I don't, I only want to have one splat map to save memory, and I'm going to choose these four textures from it, um, and yeah, stuff like that. So now we can select the house, go to our painting interface, and we can just paint whatever we want on this house. And I'm going to make the brush a little smaller here, a little smaller than that. And let's select texture, and we'll just paint here. And you can see that we're painting this texture on, and what you'll notice, uh, depending on where I'm painting, it's a little, little trickier on the roof. Um, oh, I have the back face filter on, that's what it is. So if we're painting on these boards here, uh, you'll see that the original normal uh, values are, are still being blended in. Um, so you're getting kind of the normals from uh, that original uh, uh, texturing in there. And there's actually a control for that if you go into the inspector and select your material. Uh, down here we'll see this normal blend option. So if we set this uh, to zero, it's going to get um, none of the normals from the underlying uh, system. It's going to use all the, the properties of the texture that we're using. And if you set it uh, all the way to zero, then you're going to get just um, the uh, splat maps instead of, instead of the original textures. Um, I think I have the normal map uh, array set wrong um, because we're getting that weird reflection. And let's just line these up. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, this is some older thing I was using. Um, let's go back to my material here. We'll fix that. Here is a proper array. And then we're going to grab this guy. There we go. So let's try that again without the weird uh, broken shiny material. Um, let's go to the house. Oh, sorry, we're going to do the material. Um, okay, so now let's look at that normal blend. Um, that's interpolation contrast. Here's a normal blend. Uh, so yeah, so if I set it to zero, then I'm getting just the splat maps, normal map, right? And so we're just seeing the grass, or the moss in this case, all over the house. And if I ramp that up, you're going to see a blend of the two. So now you're seeing the normal from the grass being blended uh, with the normal from the house. With the normal strength of the house being at one is, uh, the, is like a 50-50 blend. But I allow it to go over in case you need to bring that normal out a little more and make it uh, you know, a little more dominant in the mix. Uh, and so this really allows you to control... Um, how these textures are blended from the normal perspective. And there's also a per texture property down here, uh, mesh normal blend. So you can actually set that per texture. So you might want that, you know, um, your uh, grass is very, um, very low on the normal blend and looks like it's just filled in all the cracks, whereas some other material like a stain or something wants to follow the contours of the um, original um, uh, normals a lot more. So, um, what other things should I cover in the setup video? I'm going to do this uh, system in multiple videos. Normally I do them all in one, but this is a big package. Um, so, you know, there will be other videos uh, that discuss other aspects of this package. Um, but that's basically how you set things up. Uh, there's one thing I didn't show, which is if you have, your mesh has sub-meshes, then um, it will... Uh, uh, it will give you like a material uh, label and a check mark for each sub mesh. So you can say, you know what, I only want to convert two of these to the micro splat um, system, but I want to leave the other one just how it was. Uh, and that's just nice. If you know you're not going to be painting on an area, then you're not making splat maps for it and stuff like that. Um, so that's basically how it works. And uh, you should be able to paint on any sort of arbitrary mesh um, as long as the UVs are laid out reasonably well. Uh, other stuff in here um, you'll probably be familiar with, obviously brush size, brush flow, it's pretty obvious. You can rotate the brushes, um, so if you have a brush that has some kind of shape 
and then you rotate it then you can you know uh, if you're stamping stuff uh, that's pretty cool target value is basically just like if I target a value of one it means when I paint I will uh, aim to get to 100% that splat map if you set it to 0.5 then it'll only ever go up so much and because all this in the combined mode is height map blended uh, it lets you do things like if you want to just paint in the cracks um, the back face filter attempts to um, filter based on the normal of the object uh, and that's to prevent you from accidentally painting on the back side of things but there is a distance check as well which also um, makes sure the brush doesn't go out of its uh, radius effectively and then the angle filter will let you um, filter uh, based on the angle of the normal and so that can be really useful if you want to uh, paint on just the uh, un, you know the downward pointing uh, portions of say a rock because uh, you're, you're putting something that only appears on the bottom or, or moss just on the top and then finally the brush color is just the preview brush brush color um, and then there's just some debugging information here fill and fill with filters which basically fills with a texture but uses this uh, target value um, and the angle filter so that you can like say paint you know fill all the tops of the rocks uh, with something and finally, the most important thing is the save button. If you do not press the save button, your painting will not be saved. So please press the save button. Uh, that's it for uh, this video. I'll cover a lot more in future videos. Thank you very much.